He says he's here, but... Well, he can come that means he's at the table. Trying to make an order. Can we start with the pledge? Commissioner Blaney, present. Commissioner Good, Commissioner Biggs, Council Member Rivas, here. Council Member Graham, here. Council Member Jessen, here. Council Member Larson, Council Member Paparad, here. Council Member Sims, here. He's in the hall. Council right. Member Witten. <laughs> I'll stay here for him. <laughs> okay. Dan, yeah, stay here. Council Member Witten. Start now. Show which one start. Uh, advisory, <laughs> mem <laughs> <laughs> advisory members Besley? Here. Ritzy? Here. And Kuwait? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, we've got the approval of minutes. Did everybody have a chance to look those over? Move to motion to approve, Madam Chairman. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same thing. Motion carries. I always wonder what Dan's going to show up. We now know. I like to make it in. Okay, let's get started with our Capital Cities presentation. We've got a few things here to talk about tonight. Check. Thanks, Amanda. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Amanda Black, and I'm joined by Peter Harvey. Um, I'm going to start out with the second quarter report. And I'm on the page there that you see on the screen. It's our considerations and observations page. This is where we just set out the agenda for what we're going to cover. Um, we do have a few things to cover, but we're going to be um, pretty brief with our comments. Um, the first thing, I'm going to cover performance for the second quarter, but then I'll also bring everyone up to speed here through um, yesterday, kind of give you an update into the third quarter since we're already you know, far into September. And then I'm going to hand it off to Peter. He's going to cover an active equity manager project that we've been working on. Um, if you'll remember last quarter during our asset allocation study, we told you that we were doing some work on active equity manager research. And we asked if you'd be willing to hear some ideas that we have. We want to bring our best ideas to the table in terms of what managers you should be using. And we do have a couple of recommendations for you on that front. And then we'll end the meeting. Um, I'm going to very briefly cover our annual fee study. Um, as part of the board governance and the fiduciary review that you all do, we do take a deep dive into fees every year. Um, it's more of a leave behind piece, but I'll summarize it for you. However, there are a couple of areas where um, we'll want your approval to move to some cheaper share classes of some of your underlying investments. Um, one other thing on here, you'll see that we rebalanced the portfolio. We worked with the foundation to rebalance back in mid-August. Um, just as a reminder, the investment policy statement outlines the amount that you are allowed to have in equity versus fixed income. And when that gets out of range, we bring it back into target. That's a good thing. That means that equities were doing very well. So rather than just letting those run, run, and run, we sold the equities, which were the winners, and brought that you back into your strategic target, um, which um, you know, is something that we do from time to time. So let's go ahead and quickly go into the report. I'm going to look at page one here, the market review. This is where we just set up kind of the context um, you know, in which your portfolio was performing. So this is just the broad market environment. Um, it, you know, it seems a little bit long ago to talk about June 30th, but just to remind everybody, we saw a complete reversal in the second quarter of what we had seen in the first quarter. So we saw uh, a risk on sentiment prevail in the second quarter. And really that's due to the unprecedented monetary and uh, fiscal stimulus that was pumped into the markets to help offset the detriments of the global pandemic. So as a result, um, equities and fixed income performed very, very well in the second quarter. And your portfolio certainly benefited from that. Um, so in the middle of the page there, you can see those are all different styles of the equity market. Those blue bars show you how equities did for the quarter. So we had some equity styles like small cap growth even up into the 30% range. 
Um, U.S. stocks outperformed non-U.S. Uh, growth outperformed value, but nonetheless, every single style of equi equities was positive for the quarter. However, over the one year or 12 month period, um, we are still seeing several equity styles in the negative, still, um, still not able to completely claw back from what happened in the first quarter. At the bottom of the page, you'll see the fixed income returns for the um, quarter. Fixed income had a very strong year um, in terms of especially treasur uh, treasuries. And because of the um, higher allocation of fixed income in your portfolio, this also benefited Porter County. So without further ado, let's look at page two and see how your portfolio performed. Um, just a reminder, the pie charts at the top show your strategic asset allocation. Over on the right, you see that it's 40% to fixed income, 60% to equity. On the left, if you can see the, print, the numbers in parentheses are 44 and 56. Remember, we rebalanced in August, so now those are much closer to that 40 and 60. So I wanted to just point that out. Um, you can see that you ended the quarter at 168.7 million. Here in a second, I'll give you updated figures. Um, but that uh, represented a 12.6% return for the quarter, so a, a very strong quarter, um, bringing you to a 7.1% return for the 12-month period. So really outstanding performance, um, almost makes us forget what happened in, in the first quarter. Now let's go to page four. I want to dive into the performance just a little bit more. I'm looking at the chart at the top. If you look at the last year column, you can see portfolio, or excuse me, Porter, total portfolio, letter A, last year 7.13%, that outperformed your benchmark as well as your performance target um, very materially. So 7.13 versus 6.1. So over a percent higher than your, your benchmark, which is showing that your managers were doing a very good job, and then also higher than your 5% performance target. Um, also, if you look up at that floating gray bar, the letter A has a number two next to it. That means that you ranked in the second percentile of all foundations in the country for the year. Now, it is not unusual for you to fall below the median of foundations because you have a lower equity um, target than most foundations in the country. But this is one year where having less in equity um, really puts you to the top of the peer group. So I did want to point that out. And then the other thing on this page that I'll show you is if you look at the since inception um, lot, or column at the far right, the portfolio has had an average annual return of 6.87%. Um, and that number is also outperforming the different benchmarks set out um, for it. So one more chart on page um, six. Here we show you cumulative returns. So that blue line shows you over time the benefits of compounding. So that 6.87 average annual return over time corresponds to a 32.7% cumulative return. And then if you look at the numbers at the bottom, that 33% return represents $43 million in investment gains. So here I thought it would be a good chance to show you where you were as of yesterday. So here at the bottom of this page, at the end of June, the market value was $168.7 million. As of yesterday, it was $175 million. 705,297. And remember that you've also already taken out that 7.5 million earlier this year. So these figures include that, that that money has come out. So that, that additional, you can see you've, well, you've had, excuse me, positive performance here into the third quarter to the tune of about 4% for the third quarter. And now that's bringing your year-to-date performance, so from January 1st through yesterday, to 5.8%. So that's the short-winded um, performance review. I'll pause there and see if there are any questions. All right, great. Um, if we can uh, just move forward to tab two, which will be the uh, active equity enhancements that, that we have for you today. Um, and just go to page two, just to focus your attention. This is just going to be on the active uh, managers within the equity part of the portfolio. So about 26% of the total portfolio 
um, is, is actively managed. Um, and that's uh, in the context of 40% overall uh, being in equity versus 60% in fixed income. On page three, just to overview, uh, give you an overview of, of why we're bringing this to you and, and uh, what we're really thinking and, and hoping to achieve uh, with these changes. Um, when we look at active equity within the context of the entire portfolio, we're really looking to those managers that are going to be able to help improve your risk-adjusted returns, as well as provide some downside protection you know, in the event uh, that the market uh, generates negative performance, similar to what we saw earlier this year. Um, your managers that you have currently in the portfolio, the active managers have done that. This is just a uh, further enhancement based on some, some of the uh, research that we've been doing over the last couple of quarters that we think it's prudent uh, to bring to you all, given that it's, you know, uh, kind of our best thinking on a going forward basis given the market environment. So with all that said, what we're really trying to do with this uh, enhancement um, is make sure that we're reducing any biases within the portfolio, whether that be growth versus value, whether that be international versus domestic, uh, trying to really make sure that we're able to stay as close to that strategic asset allocation um, you know, as, as set out by the investment policy statement. Um, you know, with the existing managers, there's a little bit more flexibility in different parts of, the, of, of their portfolios that allow them to kind of have wider bands. Um, so we just want to make sure that we can kind of true that up and, and be true to the, uh, the investment policy statement. We also want to take a look at how we're allocating risk and fees. Uh, when we look at the large cap U.S. Uh, investment universe as an example, that's a really what we call efficient universe. It's, it's covered. There's not much uh, that fundamental research is going to do to uncover value. Um, so when we look at the active component uh, within the large cap U.S. space, we are looking there to be a little bit more defensive and higher quality, so provide that downside protection. And then as we move into areas of the market like small cap and mid cap or international, which are a little bit less efficient, uh, we want to have managers that have a really uh, defined competitive advantage where they're able to add value um, and really exploit kind of that inefficiency within those markets. Um, and all of this, at the end of the day, doesn't change the, the objective of the active management within the portfolio. It just, uh, in our eyes, uh, enhances it a little bit um, and really you know, serves to, to be true to that investment policy statement strategic allocation. So with all that said, jump, jump to uh, page four. This is just a, uh, a recap of what the existing managers look like. Um, your Vanguard Windsor 2 Fund and your Harbor Capital Appreciation, those are both large cap managers. Where that's going to be a little bit different than what we're recommending is that that is a large cap uh, value manager in the Vanguard Windsor Fund and a large cap growth manager. We're kind of uh, wanting to pivot to be a little bit more core and defensive in, in that large cap space. Uh, Diamond Hill Small Mid Cap is a small mid cap core. Flip that, we're looking to have a, an exclusive value fund and an exclusive growth fund in the, uh, the small cap space where we think those managers have a little bit better universe to, to provide outperformance. And then with Franklin Templeton, uh, Foreign Equity and William Blair, that's again, that's a value and a growth fund. We're uh, kind of going to switch that to have a uh, all-encompassing uh, international fund that uh, really is focused on quality and growth. Um, so on page five, that's what we outline here. The AQR large cap defensive style is a quantitative defensive strategy. So what they're doing is they're taking uh, what, what we would call scientifically uh, studied um, defensive uh, factors and uh, implementing that through a systematic portfolio that is supposed to be lower volatility and, and a little bit higher quality than the broad benchmark. GMO does a very similar thing, but through a little bit more of a, an active fundamental lens. Um, and then prospect or opportunity, small mid-cap value. Uh, this is what you would consider a Graham Dodd deep value manager within the small cap space. Um, we think that you know, having this in the portfolio uh, in, in that market cap uh, you know, is definitely an area where you can you know, be a little bit defensive, but also uh, you know, ex uh, have some expertise on the, the broader market universe and, and uh, generate uh, good risk-adjusted returns for the foundation. Similar with Wasatch, the small cap ultra fund, 
is a, uh, a, fun, a small cap growth fund that is really focused on finding the next innovators. So the, the next, you know, Google's really focusing on uh, companies that are going to be uh, the next, you know, uh, that are going to have significant growth tailwinds for the next couple of years. Um, again, within the small cap space, it's, you know, find the small cap company that's going to be the next large cap company. That's what they're trying to find. Um, and then lastly with GQG, uh, they do take a, a really interesting approach to the international markets. Um, and what they are trying to do is they're trying to build a research mosaic uh, on, on every company that they own um, where they understand, you know, what is or, or, and create a forecast for every single company that they have outside of what uh, Wall Street has um, to uh, to find companies that are, are uniquely positioned within uh, within their markets and within their uh, their regions or uh, or um, different style classes to, to find compounding uh, growth outside of the U.S. So what what all this means is you know basically we're we're recommending a change to the overall uh, portfolio. Um, Within your active managers, and we're doing so just to, to try to refine how uh, how we think best uh, to, to capture uh, you know returns in, in that that part of the, the market or in various parts of the market. So on page six, uh, we've done a little bit of back testing on this strategy as well. Um, I will say that back testing is not what we make our decisions off of. It's something that we look to for for confirmation based on on the hypothesis that we have going in. Um, so. What we're, what we're seeing out of this portfolio is exactly what we were hoping to see uh, when, we, when we kind of started this process. On that bottom chart, uh, if you look at the first column on the left, uh, that is just the first half of this year. You can see that this portfolio did hold up you know, quite a bit better than both the broader market and the existing portfolio, and that was really due to the, uh, the high quality in the large cap space, pro providing some defense there. Um, and then if we look over other periods, uh, these are rising and declining periods, so the red is a declining period. Uh, if the next chart over, you can see during the kind of the bull run of, you know, the last year of 2019, uh, they were able to keep up with, uh, with, the, or with the, uh, the strong market performance, but still, you know, again, looking to keep up, but provide downside protection. And the top chart shows you what that looks like over a longer period of time, and, and you can see that, you know, significantly better performance comes from, you know, the ability to, uh, really, um, you know, perform well during those market drawdowns. On page seven, and I apologize, I'm going quite quickly through this all. Um, this is just a uh, kind of a summary page of what the portfolio, the overall portfolio would look like uh, were you to accept these, uh, these changes. Um, and, and really what we're, we're trying to do here is, again, not change the, uh, the overall um, asset allocation or, or the, uh, the methodology behind why you have active in the portfolio. We're just trying to make an enhancement based on what we're seeing out in the market and, and some research that we've done. So on page eight, just a summary and kind of, uh, you know, a good script if you were to uh, approve this um, of what we're trying to do and that would, uh, or what we're recommending to do would be to replace the Vanguard Windsor 2 Fund, Harvard Capital Appreciation Fund, Diamond Hill Small Mid Cap, Fund Templeton Foreign Equity and William Blair International Funds uh, with the structure that I just outlined and, and what we're recommending, uh, which is the AQR Large Cap Defensive, GMO Quality uh, Prospector Opportunity, Wasatch Small Cap Ultra, and GQG International Opportunities. Um, I do also want to say that you'll notice that there's a lot of pages behind all of this. this is, that's just kind of supplemental uh, research uh, for your review, um, just kind of uh, really giving you a little bit more color on, on what the funds are, how they've performed, um, and some of the, the work that we've done uh, on this. Are there any so questions? If, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Um, I mean, this is what we pay you to do, right? Um, so I just want to clarify, what do we have? 6.8% return since inception, mm -hmm. and you're recommending to change? Average return per year. You're recommending to change 20% of our active managers even after the success that we have? Yeah, and, and like I said, it, it's not that your active managers haven't performed. This is more so a, an evolution of, of the way that we're thinking um, when we look at you know, the market environment, what it is today, what we think it's going to be over the next couple of years, um, and really where we think the, you know, it, it's prudent to, 
you know, be defensive versus uh, take a little bit of risk within within the active. Volatility or yeah, and I think we expect uh, low rates to prevail. We expect mm -hmm. um, a lot of central bank activity to prevail. Um, we expect volatility to increase with the pandemic, the election, uncertainties around employment. So we'd much rather recommend changes to you when things are good than when things are broken. And so we'd rather get ahead of that. And that's what we've been working on as a team back at the office. This is the research we've been doing over the last six months or so. Um, and we're, we're really excited, actually, to, to bring these managers to the table. Yeah, there's not much going on for the rest of the year, so. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, um, does this end up with a cost to us by making these changes? Yeah, so I, I guess I neglected to, to, add, to mention that. If you go to page 7, uh, you can see what the overall fee is on the, uh, the portfolio. It's 47 basis points. Um, that's, you know, blended based on, a, on, on assets. That's what we're recommending. It's actually a slight increase, about two basis points. Um, but when we're making this recommendation, we're making it based on net performance. We're, you know, at the end of the day, we think that this will, on a net basis, uh, be better for the foundation. And it'll also, some of these, uh, these fees will be reduced by some of uh, the, the share class um, findings that we have later on in, in the, the presentation. next presentation. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a almost a wash with yep. the changes, the savings that we have to bring to you. Are you dissatisfied with the present managers, or do you think we just need to change? No, we're we're not dissatisfied. Like I said, um, I think you know they've done a really good job. This is just uh, you know based on all the work that we've done. This you know we think is an enhancement. Um, so you know we, we're recommending this because we we firmly believe that it'll result you know uh, generate a better result for the foundation. Um, it's not because you have any problems with the existing managers. But we do think these new managers can do a better job going forward than the existing ones. So are these recommendations more of something particular to our foundation investment portfolio, or just something that you guys think is? It's a project we've yeah. undertaken as a firm. Okay. We've kind of we stepped back as an investment committee at Capital Cities, and we said we did this six months ago, and we said, okay, we have a lot of managers that have been in client portfolios for a long time now. Let's not just sit on our laurels. Let's think about how has the world changed and what is more of a sustainable way to earn alpha going forward. Right. And we, it was a major team effort, and that's where we've come to these, these managers. Lots of um, conversations, like interviews, meetings with these managers, and things like that. But ultimately, um, from a roles and responsibilities perspective, um, we do not have discretion over your portfolio, so we can't just, you know, pull the trigger on this. Yeah. We have to bring that to you yeah. for your decision. And we we uh, appreciate the, the work that's been done on and the investigative work, and and also not, um, you know, resting on your laurels to say, hey, it's been going well, so let's just mm -hmm. have it continue. So I, I appreciate the additional uh, insight and investigation into it. And I, I defer maybe a bit to Mr. Vestley or Mr. Ritchie uh, in terms of conceptually, does that uh, sound uh, like a reasonable course of action? Or um, Yeah, in my opinion, it's a very reasonable course of action. It's exactly the circumstances under which you want to make this type of evaluation. When times are good, let's look at the future and try to make some good decisions. and. Um, you know, the point is this wasn't isolated to our portfolio. This was more of a broader effort to look at performance and try to match that up with what the future might look like in a little bit of a sense. And I think the numbers show that. When we did the look back, it kind of proved out that in a declining market, this was quite a bit better. And in a, even in an up market, it was still better performance. So it makes a lot of sense. And, and I, I concur. Uh, the only thing is, is past performance, right? So you're, look, you're looking at the past performance of these new funds, and you're trying to figure out the lows aren't as low as what you're saying because you're going to be ahead of it, right? Mm -hmm. when, if something were to happen, and if the highs may not be as high, but they'll they'll be uh, equal to uh, what we might have seen. So I, I I'm uh, I'm doing that with my own, you know, 401 and having people call and say, hey. You Diversify a little bit, and so I'm, I'm uh, some, some of that, the, the past performance, I guess, of these funds is really, to me, indicative of 
good move for us. So. I think something else we need to remember is that you know our our return at the end is based on that one day, and that day is not for several uh, three more months. So um, this could protect us by being a little more defensive if we take care of this now. I mean, honestly, I've had meetings with investment folks over the last start of this year, actually. And every time I see them, they look like they've aged about 20 years. Not you guys, though. Uh, and they talk in terms of uncertainty and sort of have to plan for some volatility. And there's a little bit of it's guesswork, crystal ball. We have to look at you know some history, and uh, they always sort of caveat that uh, with you know, but but we don't know for sure because there's so many. Uh, uh, elements that could affect this. So I would have been surprised if you didn't come with something that said, hey, maybe we want to change a little bit here and there to try to meet some of this, because I would, to echo what uh, Member Justin said, I I would have that, at that point thought you were sitting on your laurels. So I do think it's, I do think it's good that we have some, some movement as, as we look at the months and certainly the year ahead. And I, I guess if I can add, if we have a ten percent market correction, what would you what would you expect moving those funds to uh, the new funds? I mean, I know you can't say without, uh, but but is there a number that you can say with some confidence that? that yeah, I mean, <laughs> without knowing what the exact reason for the ten percent is, it's yeah. because you know we we could run a you know kind of a key risk uh, factor analysis and. You know, but at the end of the day, it matters what lever, what key risk lever you pull that would would cause it. You know, at the end of the day, what we're question, yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, broadly speaking, you know, what we're we're hoping for is in a situation whether it be a more traditional uh, recession and market uh, correction, or whether it be an extraordinary one like we saw at the beginning of this year, we would still look to this portfolio as as we're recommending it to be a bit more defensive than the broad market. Um, or the, the managers that were in there uh, currently. Um, I, I'd be making up numbers if yeah. I gave you a number. So but already you you only have 40% in equity, which is, you know, is that right? Yes, yes. Which is considerably lower than broad foundation peers who are typically around 60 to 65%. So that's already helping you in a 10% downturn. That's going to be your primary saving grace in a downturn. This, what we're recommending, might just be another 50 basis points or a percent, you know, to the bottom line. That's our hope. That's not a prediction. Um, but I want to kind of put that, frame your expectations there. This, these, these won't change whether or not you lose money in a recession. We hope that they just save you a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, we. I mean, again, when we we do, we probably have this conversation every time we meet. But um, we had a lot of discussion going into the creation of the investment policy, and uh, and even before that, the legislation with uh, with uh, Representative Soliday. I mean, this isn't the most aggressive portfolio in on the you know planet because we are investing taxpayer money, and we wanted to be somewhat moderately conservative. Uh, so, I mean, we're going into the game with that, yep. you know, as a starting base. So, so what's the board's pleasure? You need a motion to approve their changes? Second. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, you want to, could we, we didn't talk about to you now. Kind of. Yeah. No, no, it's just a different one. Okay. At least she would do it more. Yeah, there we go. I'm just getting started on my campaign. We got it. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you all for that discussion. Um, we have one more thing that's relatively um, brief. It's behind the last tab. It's the fee analysis that I mentioned. Um, you've seen this before, so I'm going to be, like I said, rather brief. We just like to go through the different fees that you pay. I'm going to focus in on the investment management fees because that's the bulk of the fees you pay, and it's also something that we're able to benchmark um, because there are really solid peer groups out there that we can compare your fees to. So if you'll please look at page four of this um, fee study, 
What you see here is a table. The bold names down the left are your underlying managers. Now, some of these are changing out, so um, you'll see an updated version of this next time around. Um, but there are, there's one place where we have a recommendation on the equity side of things. So you see the fees that you pay in bold, um, and then you see the peer group fees to the right, and the median or middle of the peer group is also um, in bold. Now, your passive managers are extremely inexpensive. So Schwab is only two basis points. And then if you go down the page about five or six there, you see the Vanguard Developed Markets Index is five basis points. So that is something every year or even more often than every year, we're always looking to see if there's a cheaper way to access that S&P 500 index or that Vanguard or that International Developed Index. And what we found is that there is an international index now that's priced at four basis points. So that's only one basis point of savings. Um, but on a $7 million allocation, that's $700. Did I do that math right? There's 7000 think so. Oh, my gosh. No, that doesn't cause me any concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I thought it, you know what, it has to be seven. Confirm it. Yep, I got you. 7000 Times 0.001. <laughs> okay, no, it's, only, it's only 700. 700. Okay, the that's record. what I thought. So it is only 700. Right. For the record, that was what I thought the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad on me, not. <laughs> um, so, I mean, any time you can save money, whether it's 700 or 7,000, we think you should move forward. Um, one thing I want to note, though, this is an ETF. You have not held an ETF before. However, it's liquid, it acts very similarly to a mutual fund, um, but there are a couple of operational things that you would need to know from an accounting perspective. Um, ETFs, because they trade at the best price throughout the trading day, you might see multiple trade lots. Like if you place the trade to move that seven million from the mutual fund to the ETF, you'll see one single mutual fund trade because that happens at the end of the trade day. But the ETF will be purchased as the price is changing. That ETF price changes just like a stock. So you might see three or four or five lots of that purchase. And that's just something you need to know from an accounting perspective. And I'm not sure if that presents any type of problem. Most of our, a lot of our clients use ETFs and don't you know, even it mention it. But we have a few who say this is a headache, hold on. So that's where I wanted to mention it. It's only a 700 dollar savings so we're not you know saying go run into this I would actually suggest that we talk offline and from an accounting perspective with Vicki and Michelle and before we say go forward with this especially since the savings is not that material okay so that's the one thing I wanted to mention on equity now the bigger savings is and it's also more straightforward here is on page five you see all of your fixed income managers. Mm -hmm. Now, a broad takeaway here is that already every single one of your fixed income managers is priced very much lower than the median of their peer group. With that said, we still want to try to save money where we can. And something that we have um, uncovered is that the BlackRock Total Return Fund, which is now 51 basis points, um, we found that there's another share class available of that fund that's at 44 basis points. So it's the exact same fund, it's just a different share class. You do not need the minimum to invest in that cheaper share class, but we got special permission from BlackRock to move you into that because we have some other clients who are also in that fund and they know us and, and they said, sure, that's fine, you can move this client into it. Um, so that would result in an annual savings of $15,000 um, just by moving from one share class to the other. So we would seek your approval for that. That is the only recommendation that we'll have on this. So I, I do want to pause there if that's something you'd like yeah, to can we do right now. I'll make a motion to approve Second. your recommendation. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carried. Okay. So then finally, I want to take you to the last page and where we summarize all the fees. Now, you heard me talk about investment management because, as I said, that's the bulk of the fees. That's normal. Um, you can see your fees here were about 44 basis points. Going forward, those will be closer to 46, probably. Yeah. Um, 46 basis points with the new managers, but with the savings. Yeah. 
Then you've got your custody fees, which were $360 for the year, which rounds to zero basis points. You have your consultant fees, so you pay Capital Cities a flat fee. Um, we receive no fees from any other um, affiliations or anything like that. We don't have any association with banks or brokers or managers. We're completely independent. So that, that's the only way we derive fees is from our clients like that. And then when we add all of that up together, you get um, estimated fees for the last year of 790000 which equates to 48 basis points, or just shy of half a percent. Um, your out-of-pocket fees, so the, the only fees that you actually cut a check um, for are four basis points because um, 44 basis points, again, the manager fees are just netted from performance. These are extremely low fees for an in institutional investment program. Um, most institutional investors try to stay under 1% 1 or 100 basis points, and this is less than half of that. <coughs> That concludes so like, oh, our that's all. I've got one question. Sure. When you give us our return in dollars, yes. are the fees deducted? Yes. Okay. Yep, no. So do we need to need, do we need to approve anything on this or are we um, that's we my information? Uh, we'll, we'll follow up with the trade sheet um, to get your signatures on the equity and then that black rock. And then we'll also follow up offline to talk about the accounting nuances of ETFs versus mutual funds. Perfect. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good evening. You too. Sure. Safe Thank travel. Everyone. Yeah, drive safe. Safe travel home. Thank you. Okay, we have just a couple of other things to do. Um, we have to approve the Capital City's quarterly claim for 16200 Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. And then we have the CAP, Zephyr and Miller. Um, Audit. Motion to approve. Aye. Second. All those in favor, signify aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And then Vicki has a brief. Okay. Um, what you just approved. No, you just approved the Cat Stepper Miller claim. Yes. Okay. Then the next section is um, I'm pleased to say that we're nearing completion of the audit of the financial statements um, by Cat Stepper Miller. And that's what was presented to you in the email and hard copy tonight. And so basically, these are the um, financial statements that I put together, the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows and the notes. And um, the preliminary results of the audit was that there was no um, disagreements and there were no material misstatements. Always a good thing. Say no misstatements at all. So what Kat Zephyr Miller is asking is for the board to review and then release the final audit report, and then you will be brought up to date with, completely up to date with all audited statements. Do you need us to vote on this today? Uh, to release the final audit report, yes. Okay. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. And thank you, Vicki. I know you've done a ton of work on this. Well, I'm eager about accounting for those ETFs that she was talking about. That'll be fun. That'll be okay. New. Well, I know you guys have other things to do. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Motion to adjourn.